Well, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Curdle's Cauldrons here at Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And today, uh, we're going through a fun little deck that can only happen between basically every time the core rule sets happen. But before we do, I'm going to remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us, and we love you very much for it. And the link will be down below. Today, we are playing with the blue-white deck of G -G -G Ghost. So, I don't know what it is with spirits, but they're really good between, like, the M sets, like M, now it's like M19 to M20, and last year it was basically the same thing, like they're both strong, but they're never like, when once once rotate happens, they're pretty bad, Yeah, sadly. So I thought it would just be a fun little aggro deck and see where it can get to us. But of course the first guy is a Spectral Sailor, it's a 1 drop 1-1 one, one flash flying, uh, he's just super good, and if you pay 3 and a blue, you just draw a card. Yeah, he's super strong. Yeah, he's pretty fun. Next up is the Ghostly Pilferer. It is a blue and one for a 2-1 Spirit Rogue. Whenever he becomes untapped, you may pay two. If you do, draw a card. Yep. And then whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card. And discard a card, this dude gains, can't be blocked until the end of turn. So, you just get to be like, hey, draw lots of cards for free, because you're doing things, whether yeah. he's untaps or whether they're playing spells, and you just get free cards. Exactly. And the other part is like, jumpstart uh, is here or there, so you can get that trigger for sure. Or even if, uh, let's see, or or if like it gets tapped any other way, which I'll show you how. Mm -hmm. It's a Shacklegeist. It's one in a blue, two, two, flying spirit. Uh, it can't block, it can only block creatures with flying, and then tap. Two untapped spirits you control, tap target creature you don't control. So if you just have multiple dudes and you're like, at the end of turn, tap your dudes, untap, draw a card. Yeah. Pay two, draw a card. And everyone likes to do that, so it's pretty good. Uh, next is the Empyrean Eagle. It is a white, blue, and one for a 2-3 flyer. Uh, other creatures you control gain with flying get plus one, plus one. So all your flying spirits get flying, or get plus one, plus one, and you're just going to be like, hey, it's a lord. Yeah. But you're playing yeah. spirits. You have lords. Yeah, exactly. And the only <clears throat> flying one that's, not, well, the one that's not flying is the rogue, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, we have Hanged Executioner. It's two and a white, one, one flying. Uh, enters the battlefield, create one, one white spirit token, and then you pay four and uh, exile Executioner and exile target creature. So you have creature in control, and also this pumps out two dudes for three. So turn two there, turn three, you can not take an attack. Wow. Oh, this dude's real good. Just because he, he gives you creature control at an instant. Yeah, exactly. Always. You like you always are available to you, so it's pretty nice. Very. Uh, next is the Dungeon Geist. They're 2 blue and 2 for a 3-3 three, three flyer. When he comes into the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its untap step as long as you control Dungeon Geist. So it's a 4-drop that just makes them always have a pacified creature. Yeah. And it's pretty strong just because you're like, hey, don't untap that dude ever. Please. Yeah, when it first came in Dark Ascension, I think. Or Innistrad, the Innistrad block, basically. It was very powerful back in the day. I don't know how it hangs up now, but it is still it sounds pretty good. Now, for the spells, uh, the first, I'm going back to these, is Dispose and Deploy, actually. So you can play a, a Azorius in a 1, instant, tap target creature like you've been doing, and draw a card. Or Deploy, which is 2 and white and a blue. Uh, create 2 Thopter uh, tokens, and you gain 1 life for each creature you control. So this helps mitigate aggro in both ways, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, next is Dovin's Veto. It is a white and a blue instant spell can't be countered. Counter target non-creature spell. Yep. So it's a two drop counter spell that just can't be target, can't be dealt with. Yeah, you have to get rid of that Teferi on their turn three as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one is Staggering Insight for the good old aggro. It's a white and a blue. Uh, it's an enchantment. Uh, it gets plus one, plus one, and lifelink. And whenever it deals damage, combat damage to a player, you draw a card. It's basically Curious Obsession, but you don't have to attack with it, but it costs one more, but it's still super good. Yeah, it is basically Curious Obsession. And then you have, like, unblockable dudes anyway, so it works. Uh, next is Banishing Light. It is a white and two for an enchantment. Comes into the battlefield, exile target, and online permanent, and opponent controls until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield. So you're Planeswalker control. That's what this is for. Yeah, yeah. while you're playing white-blue, you need control. Well, I like onboard control anyway, this yeah, way. Yeah, you need something to get rid of things on the play. And also to help is Conclave Tribunal. You're playing aggro, so hopefully, you know, you'll be able to tap your dudes. So it's three no white, enchantment, convoke. And convoke is you tap your dudes to pay for the mana cost. And when it uh, enters the battlefield, exile target an all-in permanent opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. And this also helps with Perfer, the, the ghost rogue as well. So you can tap it to no. play this, and then when you untap it, draw a card. That's pretty good. Yeah. 
And then that's it. It's just a little solid package. Uh, and for the lands, we just have Fable Passage and Hollowed Fountain. And then the rest are basics. Like, I'm just literally staying away from all of the temples <laughs> as much as possible. And you're aggro, so hopefully you just you just need to be there turn one, two, three. Yeah. As fast as possible. And of course, we don't have sideboards, but we do have honorable mentions, and I have one. It's an Eidolon of Obstruction. It's a one white, two one, first strike spirit, and eh, we'll see how it works, but loyalty abilities of Planeswalkers, your opponent's control costs one or more to activate. So hopefully against the control matchup of, I've seen too many, well, like Esper Planeswalkers and stuff, and turn three to fairy is always a, a hang up for sure. Yeah, oh yeah. And they won't be able to do this. Or if they play four drop to fairy, they have to pay one each turn they want to trigger it. So it should be fun. And that's it, folks. Uh, the deck list will be down below. And hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Keytopia Island. Goodbye. Later. Also, guys, make sure you hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel. And then hit that bell for any future notifications that you have for our videos. And we go ahead and give a big uh, thank you to our fans for over the years, especially our Mythic and Above Patreon followers. Uh, thank you, Dwayne Higgs. And thank you, Ryan. Uh, with that... We love you. Thank you for your support.